Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine Bannister and I'm the Member Engagement Manager at One Nucleus and I'm delighted to be joined today by Zeb Younes um, from Sendea and Zeb very recently won our Life Sciences Inspiration of the Year Award at our Building Life Science Adventures 2023 conference. So a huge congratulations to Zeb and um, really, really pleased to be joined by Zeb today and looking forward to kind of having a bit of a conversation around Zeb's career journey um and um yeah the things that she's learned along the way so I'm gonna hand you over to Zeb and Zeb can you tell me a little bit about yourself thanks Jasmine um and thank you so much for the award really really honored um to be receiving that from yourself and um uh your team last week um a little bit about myself so my name is Zeb Yunus I'm a principal consultant and head of our product development and reg team here at Sendia. My background over 20 years in drug development, hands-on uh, manufacturing, QC activities, setting up and managing GMP labs, um, doing lots of testing, method development, and then working in consulting where I've hosted FDA pre-approval inspections and um, EU national GMP inspections, taking a range of programs from tissue cell and gene therapies, various recombinant proteins through development and into approval and pre-approval activities. So that's what I do. And I work for Sendia, as you mentioned, and we're a reg consulting agency and we're really there to get programs, um, get programs moving, maybe when they're stuck or when they're in concept when they're looking for support to get them moving, get them through approval. Um, we often get called when there's a problem, but we're also there all the time anyway for general questions and answers. So that's what I do and that's who I work for. Amazing. It's very, very impressive. So I want to kind of go back to the beginning um, and where you started. So did you go to university? I did. I, I was actually, I was actually going to study physics. Mm -hmm. I love a bit of sci-fi um but on enrollment day for some reason I just saw a poster for medical biochemistry mm -hmm. and I just thought oh and I don't know why. I can't <laughs> quite put a finger on why but I ended up signing up to study medical biochemistry at Royal Holloway University of London and it was it was excellent it was exactly what I needed and in terms of what I learned there that I use here every day um, there was so much of it, all the concepts, all the molecular biology concepts and the immunology concepts um, and all, of course, anything related to drug development. So that was really good, solid base to begin with. It's interesting. And just kind of how important do you think it was that you kind of trusted yourself on this, this different path? <laughs> do you know what? I never, because we do speak to students quite a lot and we get asked this question Mm. I've not really, I've never sat down and thought about my longer term <laughs> plans. And I look back now and I think, oh, you did work in laboratories and you got your hands on experience. You know, you did, you did those days in the hard grind and you managed to work in every area that you want to now, that, that I'm now representing um, and become a representative of, the various functions and really get the ins and outs of doing it before you start in my case consulting it's really I think it's a brilliant idea before anyone goes into consulting to get actual experience of your own mm -hmm. I didn't really think about it and I did just let myself be led by what felt right at the time and I think that was important in every every job I've had um and at uni just to to go because in the end if you love something it won't feel like a job mm -hmm on Mondays I actually look forward to it because I do <laughs> it's really sad but I do I really look forward to it because I'm going to do something I really enjoy it, it doesn't feel like a chore I'm not counting my days off to retirement I this is what I want to do I've worked to do this and I love it and there's some hard days always mm. but most of the time I'm doing something I really enjoy and that's that's if, if you let yourself be led by what you want and hopefully everyone will be in that boat. 
I think that's a really great piece of advice and so nice to kind of emphasize that because sometimes it's so easy to think of this like linear career pathway especially if you're starting out as like a bench scientist to think okay I need to progress within the lab become senior lab manager and and things like that but there's so many different opportunities out there um in this industry which is which is great is there anything else that you've kind of considered along the way doing that you maybe kind of thought oh maybe maybe I'm interested in doing that but actually you've you've kind of ended up on this this path do you know what there's been a few times there were jobs that I applied for mm-hmm. when I um when I first graduated that I didn't get I interviewed for and I I was so devastated mm. it, took, it took over six months to get a job and at one point you know I was thinking was it really worth going to uni because I'm not I'm not going to get something um and it's worked out really well because if I've got those jobs, I wouldn't have ended up in my first role, mm-hmm. which was at um, Microscience developing vaccines. I would never have done that. And that was such a brilliant experience. So it it was it's such a cheesy thing to say, but it does work out in the end. Mm-hmm. What I did do, one thing I did make a point of doing, and, and I have a friend of mine, and we remind each other to do this quite regularly, um, is I did check myself. So after being somewhere for a year, every time I've been somewhere for at least a year, I'll sit down and I'll reflect. And end of the year is perfect time to do that and think, am I still learning? Am I enjoying myself? Because sometimes you forget and you do get into that routine that you mentioned. And every time I felt, and it's happened a few times where I thought, oh, I've stopped learning or I'm not actually enjoying it. And I just needed a minute to think about it. It's really, rather than rushing off to get another job, it's a really brilliant idea to go back to your team and just try and control your own career and put something forward. Maybe I could do this to help out. Maybe I could work on that and um, see where that takes you. And if that still doesn't take you where you need to go, that's when you really got to start looking because you can't, you can't be in a place where you're not happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I think that's some great advice. And we kind of hear that candidates are often kind of like shifting roles to different companies because they're getting bored and they haven't got this challenge but maybe they haven't approached their manager or their team to kind of say okay look what what can we do to 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 keep learning and keep things interesting so yeah I think that's that's a really great piece of advice so what kind of challenges have you faced throughout your career oh wow so many and it's it's what I tell my team as well. It's the challenges that make you mm-hmm. and the ones that you don't like. And there's things, you know, it's not always been smooth sailing. Um, there was, there's when you have very large teams and you have to, if you work for a contractor, if you're a contractor, you have to deliver by the hour. So there's managing uh, everyone's delivery and training and telling people when they're not, performing and how to help them out of that that works and it's super satisfying when you can do that and you help them out the other end but when you can't that's when it's difficult that's always really really hard and it's very rare but it does happen um those have been tough other challenges have been quite often in drug development and it, it happens it's all the time now in, in, in consulting where people will come to you and they'll say They'll have a situation which nobody wants to be in. These are the best challenges, though, because it's what our expertise is. So they'll come to us and say, this is such a really specific thing, but we have to change our cell bank in the middle of our phase three trial. Or we're just about to launch and we're going to include a device. Or they'll just come up with something or they'll have some atypical results they really weren't expecting, some toxic leachable um, or they'll get some clinical results they weren't expecting, but actually there are other ways we can look at them. Mm-hmm. Those are the best kind of challenges, drug development ones, because we can look at them not just from a, okay, well, it's over. Mm-hmm. We can look at them like, okay, well, how can we make this work? How can we look at it from your point of view? What are your constraints? Those are fun. That's what I love about the job. But we can work within their constraints and try and come up with solutions and some of them are crazy. I mean, I've come up with some crazy ideas. We, we do it all the time. <laughs> we ratify it. We ratify it with, okay, well, you know what? Like in the pandemic, we really haven't got time to do this. It's going to take this long. So why don't we 
use a surrogate potency assay. Why don't we try this? And then we ratify it by, let's see if we can get the agencies to agree. So we'll have that debate with the regulators. And sometimes actually they're quite collaborative. Mm -hmm. More often than not, they're quite collaborative um, and they'll kind of help us around that. Sometimes they, it will just be a straight up no. So we don't always get our, our crazy ideas like, yeah, that's crazy, move along. Um, but sometimes, well, sometimes we, quite often we get that success and we get to move forward. Those are the best challenges. That's brilliant. I mean, it sounds like a big, big puzzle and lots of exciting problem solving and, and um, yeah, no, it sounds great. So what is kind of like a typical day, like day or week in the life of somebody in your role? Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so a typical day is, I used to do crazy hours, so I don't do that anymore. I'm in a nice controlled, I even have <laughs> life. There's things I do even outside of work. So a day will be something like nine to six, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in that day, I will first have um, some kind of huddle with the team just to make sure everyone knows what, what work they've got, if people have, if things have changed, because it's really dynamic working mm -hmm. in consulting. You may have something to do that morning and actually that patient might need to be dosed, might need to be dosed on the weekend, so you would have had to do it on a Friday or something so timelines have changed a bit um so workloads change so we'll check in with the team just a brief chat and then usually I have a, a bunch of clients that I work for so I'll go in and they have for an example of today all the calls I had today have been troubleshooting calls so this morning there were some atypical results people have seen in their stability program in another call um um, there was uh, an issue with the timelines. They found out that they need to they need to initiate a clinical trial earlier than they'll have material. So there was some problem solving and clinical supply to be sorted out. Um, and also, then we do we actually do some hands on work. So we write in the background between all these calls. I'm writing a um, comparability position statement. So I'm writing a position statement to put towards the agencies justifying why a product will be comparable. So we'll go through, and that's the fun sciencey bit, but we'll go through the kind of product. So in this case, it's a, it's a recombinant protein and it's got specific functionalities. So we'll talk about that. We'll describe the higher order structure and its functionalities and try and justify how we're saying what we're making now after we've changed the process is the same. So I'll do some of this, um, might even go out for a walk at some point. And then we have um, we have a bunch of uh, reviews. I'll get a lot of documents to review from the rest of the team mm -hmm. and other questions from our own team. We have this great brain pool and it's a pool of just super clever people. And if you ever have a question, you just ping this chat and someone's going to know the answer. Or we'll have done it so many times in this there's like ex-agency assessors, there's uh, people with clinical and non-clinical experience and CMC experience and everyone will just come in there. And so that's an awesome uh, chat group to be part of. Mm -hmm. So we get we get some pings in there um, or I will ping in there and ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just have some final wrap up calls. Sometimes we have agency meetings at least uh maybe at least once a month, if not more often. A lot of them are written responses. And that's a typical day, then I'll sign off. Brilliant. That sounds great. And I love this idea of, of a brain pool. Is that something that's like internal or is that kind of like a broader uh, external thing as well where it's also... It is, you know what? It is internal. It's a send, yeah. send your brain pool because when you're a consultant, the consulting of the people, mm -hmm. is it's a pool of our principal consultants mm -hmm. and our um, other experts across the board it's um it's it, I think it's because it's really sciencey it's less just regulatory mm -hmm. got lots of technical people in there which makes it makes it quite really quite useful for troubleshooting mm -hmm. that's great I think as well that kind of <clears throat> creates that open space for people to ask questions which is so important um and kind of leads me on to the next question about people that have maybe inspired and influenced you throughout your career wow 
so many people everywhere I've worked, I've had such good, great examples of strong, fair leaders with a heart. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are just crazy characters. So, should I name a few? I'm going to name a few. Right? Go on. <laughs> I think one that really sticks out because he's passed away is Chris Holloway when I was working at ERA Consulting and he was a real character and we had an office that was based in a gas museum <laughs> in London so it was already quite quirky um, and he had a great personality but he was also a, you know it was a really good egg mm. he, 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 he definitely they don't make people like that anymore it was so quirky parts of him but he, he was really a real inspiration actually it's my first proper reg job mm -hmm. I thought oh I want to do that one day I want to be there where people say oh have you heard of Zeb we should ask Zeb <laughs> everyone I spoke to was like oh we should talk to Chris and I thought oh, I want to be there one day where people think oh, I'm going to ask Zeb Chris Holloway is amazing mm -hmm. and then there was just a range of amazing people that I've just bumped into and I've thought you are outstanding. Like Angeles Escarti Nebu. She is a non clinical expert here at Sendia as well, but I've worked with her in other places. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hear her talk, and she's a, a non clinical expert, by the end of it, she's so excited and pumped about what she's talking about. And by the end of it, you have an entire job development plan mapped out for you. And it's just so humble and down to earth, but is actually a complete genius. And when you, you know, she, she would, you, there's no question you can ask that silly and you feel like that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that sometimes. Um, and she will just, and people like that who are so down to earth and just manage, just manage to pull it off, you know, have this expertise and not make you feel bad for asking questions. Um, I really know what they're talking about. You can't help but respect them. So there, there's two two heroes of mine. I love that, and um, I think it's so difficult. Actually, I mean, you see all of these like management and leadership courses online, but actually, the most kind of memorable and inspiring people are the ones that are authentic. They're themselves, albeit a bit quirky, but they're also passionate about what they do, and I think that's that's brilliant. That's so, so true. Yeah. Especially in reg, it can get dry. Yeah. <laughs> it can it can be quite dry reading sometimes. Oh. So to have have some personality, and like you said, to just be just be okay okay with it because we don't all all know everything. Mm -hmm. And I think times have changed. I think really early on in my career, especially when companies were that we weren't at biotech wasn't so strong. And there was all these redundancies and risks of companies falling through the roof if one of their programs failed. There was lots of knowledge hoarding, mm -hmm. where if you had the knowledge, you had the power. But I honestly think that's quite different now, where actually it's in your interest to share the knowledge. Mm -hmm. and to have spaces where everyone understands and you're all on the same page. Um, and there's no hoarding of knowledge. I, it's always in your interest because it only brings you forward because if you've learned something and you've taught someone else then they can do that and you can move on and do something above that mm -hmm. so i think that's a that's a really nice change in the industry hopefully more people see that definitely i i hope so too so just to kind of finish up i mean you've shared some really great advice and it's been so nice to hear about your kind of career journey um but what kind of advice would you give to somebody that as maybe kind of like an early career seeker that's perhaps considering a career in regulatory yeah you know what I I can give some advice but I've seen people take so many routes and it's worked for them and they're equally excellent my my advice just reflects my experience right so mm -hmm. I would say um get the first thing you should do instead of stepping straight out of uni into regs is get out there and work in industry. Go and get some experience, even if it's for a short term, just so when you are consulting and you're giving advice, you, the advice you're giving, you know what it actually means. You know how much work you're asking someone to do. 
Mm -hmm. you say, oh, why don't you do these tests? Or when you're reviewing a, a report, you know what it took to get it where it is. And you know how the communications work inside these places instead of taking it for granted. So I think it's a really good idea to get some industry experience in a drug developer, um, CMOs, contract testing lab, CROs, just to get some real world experience. And one, you might like what you're doing. You might not want to go into regs after that. Mm -hmm. Or if you just follow that path, and then at some point when you're ready and you feel like you've really understood how, I'm not saying become an expert, but really understood how some of these areas work, I think that's a good time for you then to go into regs. And if you are keen on doing regs, the kind of things that you've got to make sure you look out for are like high attention to detail, mm -hmm. technical writing, get as much technical writing experience as you can, whether it's report writing or writing up your results um, and any regulatory activity. So if there's any dossier writing or agency communications, or even if I remember one of the first things I got involved in was that I volunteered to be a scribe in inspections mm -hmm. and I was just this person who just sit there and take all the minutes or I was a runner running between the rooms and it was one of my first things that I did um and I learned so much I just thought oh okay this is how an inspection runs oh my god I can't believe they <laughs> asked that and it just puts you in the front seat so I think that's always a get all that experience mm -hmm. and then you're in a in a good place to to work in regs wonderful well thank you so much and um yeah it's been great to, to to talk with you and another huge congratulations it's yeah super well deserved so yeah <laughs> thank you